evening, everyone. And uh, thank you, Kapoor, sir. Uh, it's very fortunate to speak in front of you, you being my guide, my guru, my mentor. And after such an elusive talk by uh, Dr. Anurag, I'll be speaking on seritinib, a frontier in first-line treatment of ALK-positive non-small cell lung cancer. So as we all are aware that uh, lung cancer is most commonly diagnosed malignancy in males worldwide as well as in our country. So, and the incidence of uh, lung adenocarcinoma is increasing and it has been said that around 80% of the patients having lung and non sponsor lung cancer will have some of the other actionable or targetable driver mutations which can be targeted with the, the present therapies what we have. So, it's very understanding the uh, molecular pathways which drive uh, these uh, malignancies. It has been... Uh, uh, been since the research have been done and it was been possible to actually uh, search for certain drugs which actually act on these drivers which are driving these mutations that's why they, these which were driving these malignancies and also known as driver mutations and so to targeting these driver mutation it's very helpful because it's helped in controlling the disease and uh, with very favorable toxicity profile so it becomes very much paramount to detect these driver mutations, which can be detected by multiple methods. It will be very unfair uh, if I start speaking on this after such a beautiful talk by Dr. Anurag. So, but uh, one thing I would like to say that sequential testing for driver mutation, there'll always, uh, there'll be problem of uh, tissue and uh, uh, tissue can be fully exhausted and all driver mutations could not be checked for. So. Uh, all these uh, guidelines recommend broad molecular profiling, which includes all the uh, targetable mutations by limited NGS panel, which include both RNA-based and uh, DNA-based uh, NGS sequencing for the targetable driver mutations. So what are the benefits and challenges of uh, next generation sequencing? Already Dr. Anurag sir has very beautifully explained, so I will not go uh, much into that. <laughs> but yes. NGS is the new thing which has actually helped us to detect the driver mutation with more sensitivity and specificity with a very small amount of tissue. And that is, uh, so tissue is not the issue for uh, uh, next generation sequencing. So, so a limited uh, next generation sequencing, which is based on both uh, DNA based and RNA based because RNA based uh, sequencing as said by sir is uh, very good and very important for the fusion transcripts for which DNA base is less sensitive. So these two has to be done to detect for uh, targetable driver mutations and uh, should be done in both uh, squamous cell as well as adenocarcinoma as per the recent guidelines. So non-sponsor lung cancer comprises multiple distinct genetic subtypes and EGFR mutations are the commonest mutation which in uh, Western countries, it is found in around 15 to 20% of the patient, but in uh, Asians, it is found in around 50% of the patient. Second most common is ALK, which is found in around 7% of the patient. So ALK, for ALK, uh, what are the drugs we have? We have first generation ALK TKI, we have second generation ALK TKI, we have uh, third generation ALK TKI. So I'll be speaking on first line serotonin, which is the second generation ALK TKI versus chemotherapy in patient with ALK rearranged non sponsor lung cancer, the trials name is SN4, a randomized phase 3 study where the patient with ALK positive, locally advanced or metastatic non squamous cell, uh, non squamous non sponsor cell lung cancer were randomized either to serotonin 750 MD or PEMCIS or PEM carbo every three weeks. And patients who had uh, uh, stable disease following chemotherapy went on pemetrexin maintenance or uh, <laughs> otherwise patient on the other arm, serotonin barb went with serotonin. So as seen in the capillary makeup, you can see that serotonin doubled the median progression-free survival. It with chemotherapy it is 8.1 uh, versus 16.6 .6 with serotonin with hazard ratio of 0.55. That is around 45% reduced risk of death or progression with overall response rate of 72% and duration of response of uh, nearly about two years. And 24 month overall survival rate is 70%. That's uh, quite an awesome in case of non sponsor lung cancer. So, and also you can see the event free survival with the first line serotonin versus chemotherapy. And you can see the event free survival with serotonin uh, was uh, 26.3 months with serotonin and only 10.6 months with chemotherapy uh, with the hazard ratio of 0.66. So 
and uh, in asian patients also we found the similar uh, uh, things with the uh, uh, serotonin vis a vis chemotherapy serotonin has prolonged the, the progression free survival and overall survival as compared to the chemotherapy the but the problem was uh, about the toxicity of this drug and mainly the gi toxicity so for which uh, the sn8 trial actually randomized the patient into various doses of uh, serotonin 450 mg with a low fat meal or 600 mg with a low fat meal or serotonin 750 mg under fasting state where the primary endpoint was steady state pharmacokinetics of serotonin uh, and uh, key secondary endpoint was uh, uh, overall response rate and duration of response as per resist so you can see the duration of response in uh, uh, a or the left side of the slide and the uh, pfs and overall survival in uh, uh, the right side of the slide, you can see that uh, a 450 mg with low fat meal has actually uh, significantly prolonged the event free survival and uh, uh, with the, as compared to the 600 and 750. And also if you see the progression free survival and overall survival, you can see the progression free survival is significantly prolonged with this uh, uh, 450 milligram of serotonin. And the toxicity profile of 450 milligram of serotonin was much better than uh, that of uh, 750. And you can see this uh, data that overall response rate of uh, 450 milligram is 82.8% as compared to lower, numerically lower overall response rate with 600 and 750 MD and the disease control rate of more than 95%. You can also see the median progression-free survival, progression-free survival at 24 months and overall survival rate at 36 months, which is significantly superior with the uh, 450 milligram as compared to 600 and 750. The second thing about the AL positive non small cell lung cancer is the incidence of brain metastasis. Initially, upfront, around 20 to 30 percent of the patient will have brain metastasis, and 70 percent will not have any brain metastasis. But the cumulative incidence of brain metastasis at the end of two years is 50 percent, and most of the patients actually develop brain metastasis at the as the first site of progression when on uh, first generation TKI. So. Uh, SN4 has actually shown that the progression-free survival in the patients, even with brain metastasis, was significantly superior with serotonin. You can see the 10.7 months in patients with brain metastasis as uh, compared to 6.7 with chemotherapy. And patients who, who didn't have brain metastasis at upfront were having a progression-free survival of 26.3 months, that with 8.3 months with chemotherapy. That is tripling of progression-free survival in patients who were not having brain metastasis. So, and the 70% of the patient are those which are not having brain metastasis upfront or the at the onset of the disease. And the uh, uh, intracranial response rate is uh, more than 70%. You can see that intracranial response rate is such high and uh, it is uh, uh, at 24 weeks, it is 86.4% as compared to 50% with the chemotherapy. And also Asian subgroup analysis also revealed the similar uh, results that uh, yes, the disease control rate, overall response rate, and the responses, whether it is CR, PRs, uh, stable disease, they were uh, actually numerically higher with serotonin as compared to the chemotherapy. And if you see that intracranial disease control rate, you can very well see that it was uh, 82.9 with serotonin as compared to 79 with the chemotherapy. So this is a original article that is comparative efficacy of first line serotonin versus crizotinib in advanced or metastatic anaplastic uh, ALK positive non sponsor lung cancer and adjusted indirect comparison with external controls. So profile 1014 is uh, uh, the patient who had actually uh, uh, crizotinib as first line of uh, therapy in uh, ALK positive non sponsor lung cancer that was profile 1014 and profile 1007 was patient who had uh, actually uh, ALK inhibitor as a second line therapy uh, in metastatic ALK positive non sponsor lung cancer. So in profile 1014, you can see the progression free survival of 10.9 months, whereas in SN4, you can see the progression free survival was 16.6 months and patient who didn't have brain metastasis, that was around 26 months. Though cross trial comparison uh, is not a fair mean of uh, like uh, 
comparing the efficacy of any drug, but this was an adjusted uh, uh, comparison between the two drugs. And you can very well see the overall survival also with the hazard ratio of 0 0.76 with prizotinib and uh, uh, with uh, 0 0.73 with uh, seritinib. Here also seritinib is having uh, certain marks over prizotinib. Now, coming to the safety profile, yes, SN4 has actually shown uh, quite a few toxicities with this drug, uh, mostly GI toxicities. But uh, SN8 trial, which has actually shown that seritinib 450 milligram is uh, similarly is uh, non-inferior to 600 or 750 mg and having numerically improved efficacy as compared to 600 and 750, but 450 has to be taken with low fat meal. So that was also the uh, toxicity profile was also negated with low dose with low fat meals in SN8 trial. So otherwise, uh, the, uh, the drug has uh, consistent safety profile, seritinib significantly improved the quality of life and significantly prolonged the time to deterioration of lung cancer specific symptoms compared with chemotherapy. So these are the uh, safety of first line seritinib. As I said that any grade diarrhea was seen in 85% of the patient with seritinib, but uh, uh, once uh, that uh, SNA trial results were released, so most of the patients were offered 450 milligram with the low fat meal. That time the diarrhea was significantly reduced. So we have a lot many IL TKIs. We have uh, Crizotinib, that is first line, Seritinib, second line, and we have Alectinib. And recently we have uh, Lolatinib based on the Crown trial. Alectinib and Lolatinib, yeah, they are third generation TKI. They have improved efficacy as compared to first generation and second generation TKI. And, but if you see that uh, all these drugs are being recommended as category one for al positive non sponsor lung cancer. And uh, now coming to the drugs which are, uh, are most efficacious that lorlatinib and alectinib. But if you see the cost effective worrying about these drugs significantly and with this drug, pay, uh, around 70% of patients who are not having brain metastasis upfront can be offered this drug and they can have progression-free survival of around 26.3 months, then the subset of patient can go on electinib or lorlatinib, and thus the cost-effective approach will be very well suited in patients who cannot actually afford the lorlatinib or electinib in first line of the treatment for ALK positive. So what are the points which I consider using an ALK TKI in the first line treatment for non sponsor lung cancer advanced with uh, uh, ALK positivity? So the superior efficacy, so yes, uh, the second generation and the third generation TKI are superior than the first generation TKI. As you can see, the progression free survival is 16 months with the second generation TKI, uh, which is uh, doubled as compared to chemotherapy and patients who are not having brain metastasis there, it is around 26 months. So we can like uh, uh, select between second generation and the third generation TKI. Uh, and patients who are not having brain metastasis, a second generation TKI will be a cost effective option. A patient who are not having brain metastasis at baseline, surely a second generation TKI. But yes, the patient who are having brain metastasis at baseline, then the electinib and lorlatinib have actually proven uh, higher scores in patients with brain metastasis. So in these patients, 30% of the patients at upfront who present with brain metastasis, electinib or lorlatinib will be a good choice and symptomatic disease and the second line post uh, progression, we must always understand that what are the things left in the basket once I start up, uh, my patient on particular drug. Uh, so if I start the patient directly on electinib and lorlatinib, then I have to uh, like switch on to chemotherapy on the second line because uh, these patients are uh, less uh, responsive to immunotherapy. So, but if I start seritinib in the patient, in the subset of patient, that is 70% of the patient who are not having brain metastasis at upfront, I will have alectinib in some subset of the patient and lorlatinib, which I can actually give them at a cost-effective approach in the second or the third line. And the chemotherapy can be delayed in such patients. So that will be my approach. So conclusion, that SN4 trial, that ALK inhibitor naive patients with AL positive non sponsor lung cancer, seritinib has significantly improved progression free survival and numerically improved overall survival. I'm so sorry. Uh, the overall survival was not significantly improved. It was numerically improved only. But yes, uh, the doubling of progression free survival uh, 
in uh, intent to treat population and tripling in patients who, who did not have brain metastasis at upfront. PFS benefit was seen irrespective of brain metastasis. Gastrointestinal adverse events were seen with serotonin, but after SN8 study, they were significantly reduced with the low dose with low fat meal. Efficacy and safety of serotonin was well established in Asian patient population with AL positive metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dube. You have very nicely uh, covered the serotonin or elk in elk positive lung cancer. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to know one thing. If you have sure. got a patient who has got elk positive and EGFR positive also, sir, what is your approach? Sir, uh, there is no like standard approach uh, one can say, but uh, I have actually got two patients who are both ALK and EGFR positive. So, uh, can we start both the TKs together? <coughs> I don't know. But I started that patient on Fizotinib because that patient was very poor. But patient lost to follow. And another patient was again ALK and EGFR positive was there. I have started because that patient was from uh, ESI. So, I have started that patient on Tagliso and I have, I have to yet to see like, uh, means Osimertinib. So, only one and a half months are over. I don't know like uh, that will be a right approach or not. But I don't think so that two TKIs can be started at once. Or if you can like yeah. uh, throw some light. Anybody in the panel or anybody in the forum can uh, uh, guide can, what, what should be the approach? Because I also had a patient of EJFR positive and ALK positive. I started both the things. But uh, the patient didn't do well. In fact, mm -hmm. within a month, within two months only. Uh, sir, didn't do well in the term of tolerability or in the terms of sir, both. Uh, the disease progression? Both. Both. Sir. If somebody has some answer, then probably can communicate to us. Uh, because I'm also not very sure what what should be done in such patients? Thank you very much, Dube. It was a very, a very interesting talk. Uh, all the uh, ALK positive treatments are available, and one can choose, as uh, Dr. Dube has said, depending on the various uh, guidelines. One can go in for the uh, PKI, depending on the type of the uh, disease presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.